The United States has now responded to the deaths of three American soldiers in Jordan. The Pentagon conducting more than 85 airstrikes on three sites in Iraq and four sites in Syria. The strikes targeted proxy militias and Iranian Quds forces outside of Iran, hitting more than half a dozen facilities, including command and control operations, intelligence centers, weapons storage sites, and supply chain facilities. Sites two U.S. officials tell NBC News are directly linked to the drone attack in Jordan. This will also not be a one-day affair. The U.S. says the response will be phased in a campaign that could last for weeks. Quote, this is the start of these actions. They will unfold at times and places of our choosing, said Secretary of Defense Austin in a statement. The question now is not only how does Iran respond, but how do our allies in the region react? It is delicate. The president and his top officials have repeatedly said they do not want a war with Iran, and they don't want to be dragged into a larger Middle East conflict. Can they avoid it? Iraq was already angry about U.S. airstrikes against Iranian-backed groups there last week, with a spokesperson for the Iraqi prime minister calling it a violation of sovereignty that undermines years of cooperation. What do the Iraqis say now? And why does the U.S. still have such a large presence there in the first place? We should also note the timing. These strikes were launched less than two hours after President Biden welcomed home the remains of three American soldiers at Dover Air Force Base in Delaware. In a statement released just last hour, the president said the United States does not seek conflict in the Middle East or anywhere else in the world. But let all those who might seek to do us harm know this. If you harm an American, we will respond. We start tonight with correspondents at the White House, the Pentagon, and on the ground in Iraq. Um, Kelly O'Donnell, you just got off a call with the National Security Council. Tell me what they told you. Well, part of what we're learning is that this operation expanded over about a 30-minute period, and we're told that all of the U.S. aircraft are now safely back out of harm's way. They believe that their initial assessments, that they were able to strike the targets they set out to strike, and when daylight comes in Iraq and Syria and where these operations were carried out, they will have a better uh, opportunity then to do full battle damage assessment. Uh, that includes a video component, and I'm told that there will be some determination about whether any of the uh, strikes that are captured on the airplane video and so forth, if any of that can be made public, and they committed to some transparency on that. What they would not say is exactly what comes next, except there will be more operations. They did acknowledge that weather was a significant factor in the timing of what took place tonight. They talked about the president being uh, updated throughout the plans of the operation, and they feel good about uh, how they were able to target the types of facilities that they argue are directly related to the kinds of strikes that were bringing danger and ultimately lethal consequences for American soldiers. Uh, that happened, of course, in Jordan uh, Sunday and cost three American lives and dozens more injured. So that was the event that struck this into this phase of operation tonight. Our sense is that the activity for this evening is concluded based on uh, the officials saying that the aircraft are out of harm's way. When the next uh, type of strikes will take place, we don't have a sense. There were a lot of questions asked about that, as you might imagine. And they could not get into those details, not wanting to be ahead of uh, the program, if you will. I also asked about cyber components to this. Uh, they would not engage on that at this point, instead focused on the specific operations. They did tell us they alerted the government of Iraq in advance that the U.S. would be flying into their territory and hitting these strikes that have the Iranian influence uh, associated with uh, the the Houthis and the uh, specific group that they believe is responsible for the kind of drone activity that cost American lives. So we're getting a lot of detail. And basically the big picture here is that the U.S. wanted to take out capabilities without going inside Iran 
and to send a very powerful signal. There will be more to learn as they are able to gain uh, additional information and more operations to come. But that's an initial snapshot of what we're learning from officials uh, just after this operation concluded. I want to get Katie? Keir's reaction on Iraq, but first one more to you, Kelly O'Donnell. Let me ask you about the anticipation. What does the White House believe will happen next? Well, I think there is a sense that with the military's assessment about what strikes uh, damage caused by them, what capabilities have been removed from the battlefield, if you will, what then come, come from this, like what other needed targets uh, have to be next in the crosshairs. We don't know the duration. We just know that it is intended to be a multi-part process. Uh, and they really avoided talking about timing and so forth for all the obvious reasons. And we want to be responsible about not uh, forecasting military operations uh, too far in advance beyond what the U.S. Uh, wants to say. This remains a U.S. Uh, operation, not an allied operation that we had seen in other kinds of uh, defensive moves that have been happening in that region. So. Expect that over a period of time, we will get more indications of when they're ready to move. It was notable that uh, the officials talked about favorable weather. And so those kinds of conditions uh, loom very large. So we expect battle de uh, damage assessments after daylight. We expect an assessment of video. We expect to have a better sense of uh, what the targets were. They did, for example, say there were secondary explosions when they hit places that had munitions. So the initial strike and then a secondary strike, meaning the on the ground uh, material would blow up. And they were able to track those kinds of things, giving them confidence, they say, that the intended targets were the ones they hit. And they said they chose targets with a specific uh, intention of reducing uh, civilian collateral damage. And I'm sure that will be a pressing question in the days ahead as well. Katie? Kelly, were they targeting any individuals? I know they're talking about not getting civilians or reducing civilian casualties. Were they targeting any individuals? In the time that I was on the call with the Q&A, I did not hear a discussion of specific human targets. This was about capabilities in the period there. We'll review uh, the additional questions and answers since I came out to join you, and we'll get back to you if we have more on that. Kelly O'Donnell, thank you very much. Let's go to Keir Simmons, who is in Erbil, Iraq, here. Um, Kelly was just mentioning that Iraq was alerted before these strikes happened. What can you tell us about how delicate it is out there? Oh, it is delicate. Uh, one of the uh, issues tonight is that we don't actually know exactly where has been targeted. Clearly, we know the kinds of places that have been targeted, and Kelly was uh, very well setting that out for you for you there. You know, mu munitions, drones, the kinds of facilities uh, that these Iranian-backed proxies, and in fact the Iranian Republican Guard themselves, have uh, been using uh, to uh, target uh, U.S. bases uh, and even uh, attempting to supply groups like Hezbollah and, and targeting uh, Israel. So we we know that aspect of it, but we don't know yet exactly what uh, was uh, hit. Now, we have uh, got, so what you have to rely on are the kinds of regional reports that we're hearing. So in Ambar province, uh, here in Iraq, we are hearing that there were explosions there and that it's in a place where the group Qatab Hezbollah uh, is known to have an encampment now. Uh, Qatab Hezbollah is the group uh, that is accused of carrying out that uh, where, uh, that drone attack at Tower 22 that killed those uh, three uh, U.S. service members. But then, two in Ambar province, uh, we're hearing uh, that uh, a site that is, uh, belongs to the popular mobilize, mobilization uh, forces, uh, another Iranian-backed kind of militia, uh, was also hit. And if that is true, and again, I should just say, these are just regional reports, it's very difficult to confirm, it's now uh, 2 a.m. here, uh, if that is the case, uh, the PMF is actually connected to the Iraqi uh, military. So that's the kind of challenge that you may see. Now, we do have an Iraqi response. Uh, this is from uh, the uh, commander-in-chief of the armed forces uh, here in Iraq. Bear in mind... Uh, Iraq will feel it has to complain about these strikes, uh, but what it is saying is uh, that cities uh, along the Iraqi border areas are being subjected to airstrikes by United States aircraft as these strikes come at a time when Iraq is striving to ensure the stability of the region. These strikes, this uh, statement from the Iraqi military says, uh, constitute a violation of Iraqi sovereignty, an undermining of the efforts of the Iraqi government, and a threat that will drag Iraq and the region into 
unforeseen uh, consequences. Now, we should just uh, caveat that with, by pointing out that the Iraqi government isn't just a partner of the US, it's also a partner of Iran. Uh, so it, it looks both ways, if, if you like, and, and also we know that the Iraq will inevitably complain about its sovereignty being violated. Uh, the question is whether it does anything about it. And by, by that I mean whether it leads to uh, Iraq deciding to tell the US forces to leave. So far it hasn't done that, despite previous strikes here. Then just to, turning to Syria, uh, what we are hearing we heard really at the beginning of all this uh, that there was, uh, there, were, there was explosions in Mayadeen. That's in eastern Syria, again, uh, along the border there. Now, uh, another group, uh, Katie, uh, which, which we know from the, uh, Israel, uh, uh, the Syrian civil war, uh, the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, it is saying that 17 positions sheltering Iranian militias at al Mayadeen. Uh, that, that, that those have been struck. So uh, that gives you a picture. And as you hear about the scale the, of this targeting, uh, 85 sites according to... Uh, 85 targets according to the, to the US, I think one of the things to take away from that is a spotlight, and we've said it a number of times already tonight, a, a spotlight on just how embedded and how widespread the Iranian influence and its facilities are, particularly in Syria, but also here in Iraq. This has been allowed to happen, if you like, over a number of years. Uh, they have taken advantage, just for example, of the, the, uh, the terrible earthquake that you'll remember a uh, short time, uh, not long ago. Uh, the Iranians used that as an opportunity, for example, to, to embed themselves more in Syria. So uh, this, you could argue, has been a long time coming. The issue, though, is, and the Israelis have been saying that for a long time, the issue, though, is, will these strikes tonight and what comes next, will they actually shift Tehran's strategic approach, which is to try to put pressure on Israel and push uh, America out of this region? I think there's a big question mark there, despite the strength of these strikes.